What's up guys, it's your boy Griffin GFX. Welcome to the Photoshop Collage Effect. So I've always felt like collages have gotten a bad image because of the shitty arts and craft collages that you probably learned back in school with a glue stick and a magazine. But from time to time I actually see some really nice collage artwork. So I wanted to take the time to teach you guys how to create powerful modern collages all inside of Photoshop. On screen now is some artwork by a friend of mine. His Instagram is by King. You can see how sections of his image look like they've been printed off on different sheets of paper to create a slightly three dimensional collage effect. Now this can all be achieved inside of Photoshop. I know, it looks like a real collage, right? King was kind enough to reveal some of his secrets and even wanted to share with us his paper design pack which you can download for completely free. We also worked together to create a deluxe pack which contains loads of unique paper textures which will help you take your collages to the next level. This video wouldn't have been possible without King so please go drop him a follow on the gram. He's at 4k right now. If we can double that and get him to 8k we'll return for a part 2 and go into further detail on how to become a collage god. Let's open up Photoshop and let's open up the collage pack which you can download from my website which is griffingfx.com right before we get into that man has been sponsored so this video is sponsored by extra who makes smart wallets now you guys know i don't really have sponsors on the channel and it's because i don't want to promote things that i don't actually want to support but these wallets are honestly very cool so the main thing that makes extra smart wallets stand out is because they have this little button on the side which makes your cards slide out so you could use a contactless payment without even opening your wallet they also look very nice they're very light it's good quality leather they also have built-in technology which allows you to call your wallet if you've lost it or even track it if it's not nearby the technology is solar powered and just two hours in the sun will keep your wallet powered for three months so if you guys think these wallets are as cool as i do then you can check them out using the link down below and make sure you use code griffin15 so you can get 15 percent off any wallet on their site you're supporting them and you're supporting me all right anyway back to the video so i'm gonna start out by trying to teach you how to get something similar to king's work when you look at a piece like this it can be a bit overwhelming but it's actually not too difficult to create once you know how to do it so i'm gonna go online and look for some photography i can turn into a collage i usually use pinterest if you're looking for artist photography try using a website called LastFM, as the photos that they have on there i really don't see anywhere else on the internet so here's king's artwork it's very cool you can see that he's ripping the image apart and exposing another image underneath I actually found this bit of artwork here. I don't think this is his album cover, but uh, maybe it's like what's on the back or something. Uh, but I thought this was really cool. It looks like it's already a kind of paper effect. So I guess we're cheating a little bit, but I'm going to use this in order to show you how to do the effect. So I went into the collage pack and I found this. Uh, and I'm going to basically show you how you can combine these two images to create the effect that you've actually printed and ripped up the kamikaze cover. So we're going to put the paper texture on top of the kamikaze artwork. And then we're going to go through the blend modes you see where it says normal we're going to change that now most of these are probably not going to work most of them are going to look like complete shit. but there's going to be one or two that is going to pop out like look at this one for example so you can probably tell that the quality of this paper is letting it down so what we can do is we can sharpen now i like to use sharpen more because it's quite an extreme sharpen and what's good about paper is there's often quite a lot of grain inside the paper so it kind of doesn't matter how much you sharpen it if anything the sharper it gets the more realistic it looks i'm going to apply a clipping mask so we can see what it's looking like properly so you can see that it now looks like we've actually printed this bit of artwork out and then kind of started ripping and scratching away at the paper. Now this was literally done in a few seconds. So you can imagine as you start to do more and more of this, how your collage image is really going to start to look quite cool. As well as sharpening over and over again, you're probably going to want to keep opening the curves tool to change the lighting. If you make the darks darker and the lights lighter, it's probably going to look a little bit better. Something else that I like to do, which you can also find in the design pack, is use a halftone texture. Most paper when it's printed, especially on like a magazine or something like that, the picture is never perfect. It's been cut up with lots of dots and it's called the halftone pattern. So you can drag the halftone in, put it over the top, create another clipping mask. You want to make the halftone pretty small. So I quite like this one. It's blend mode divide. So now the main difference between mine and King's here is you can see his is actually revealing another image underneath. Now, all it takes to do this is the right kind of paper texture. But if you're online looking for this kind of stuff, it's gonna be quite difficult to find. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and get a bit of paper, like a real piece of paper outside of Photoshop. Um, and we're gonna start to rip holes in it and basically crumple it up a little bit and then take a photograph of it and scan it in. Or not scan it, you know, just email it to yourself. Just get it from your phone into your Photoshop document. So let's go do that. 
All right, guys, so ripping up your own paper is obviously the best thing you can do because it means you have complete flexibility and you don't need to use someone else's templates. But maybe you live in an igloo in Antarctica and you don't have access to any paper. What I've done is I've ripped up 10 pieces of paper myself with multiple layers to them. And I'm going to put that in the free design pack for you so you can skip this stage if you'd like to. So here's the image that I've taken of the paper that I've ripped up. The quality isn't really that great and the paper's at an angle and the lighting of the paper's a bit weird. But I guess this just proves to you it doesn't really matter. You can change all of this in Photoshop. So I've gone for a black background because obviously it contrasts most with the white. So using the magic wand tool, I'm going to shift and left click into each of these paper rips. And then I'm going to go select, modify, expand. And then I'm going to expand it by one or maybe two. Let me see what two looks like. Okay, I think two is perfect. So what that did is it just pushed the selection a little bit further back so that we're actually cutting some of this image out. So now I'm gonna hit delete. Now I'm gonna hop back online and I'm gonna try and find some imagery that I'd like to put on top of the paper and underneath the paper. So for this example, I'm gonna be using the Kids See Ghost album cover and the Yay album cover. So I'm thinking because I have a high quality image of this one, I'm gonna put this over the entire sheet of paper. So let me just select the paper and then Control Shift and I is gonna select everything outside of the paper. Now I'm gonna delete. So now we just have our sheet of paper. I'm gonna bring this over the top and I'm gonna create a clipping mask. Cool. Now once we've done this, a bit of advice that King gave me was to actually duplicate the paper layer, bring it back on top of the photo, create a clipping mask and then set the blend mode to multiply. Now what this is going to do is it's going to allow the paper rips to actually show through. So for example if you see here, there's a bit of texture, there's some cracks and stuff going on and without the, without the multiply they're just not there. I'm also going to place the halftone image back on top. I'm using blend mode divide because it makes the colors nice and saturated. Now I'm going to position the yay image underneath the paper. I'm going to sharpen it just because the quality isn't amazing. And I'm also going to add a half tone to this image. If you add a drop shadow to the paper layer, you will see that it now looks like the paper is actually sitting underneath. You know, the rips actually look a little bit more real. And something else that you're now going to want to do is using a rubber right where the edge of the rip is, you want to erase the image. Because if you've noticed, at the edge of a paper rip, the photograph kind of tears a little bit and you just see the paper exposed underneath. So I find that when you use a default rubber trying to do this, you don't get a nice effect. So instead I'm using Kyle's Natural Edge Eraser. I'll try and put that down in the description. If I can't find it, I'll try and find the best replacement that I can find. So you just want to go around like this, creating the paper rip. In my opinion, the drop shadow is looking a little bit too extreme right now, so I'm actually gonna turn it off and I'm gonna demonstrate how you can create your own shadows. You go to the layer that's directly underneath the top paper layer, and then you make a black brush. We're gonna turn the hardness of the brush down, and we're literally gonna draw the shadows ourselves. Now what's cool about this is it's gonna be a little bit random, whereas if you use Photoshop's drop shadow, it's a little bit too consistent, because you probably know that with paper, when it's ripped up and placed on another bit of paper, different parts of the paper are going to be higher up creating different shadow sizes and the drop shadow just doesn't really allow you to do that. Now that you've done this you can lower the opacity until you get your desired effect. I think usually going quite low on the opacity is the trick. So that basically explains how King does it. Now you can see with his he has a lot more paper scratches on top. This really adds to the collage effect. You can either do this again just by scratching the hell out of your paper or you can go ahead and use a texture like we did on the kamikaze one and just apply it over the top of your image. So you've probably seen with collage art, if you want to put some words and typography onto the artwork, people typically find magazines and newspapers and cut out letters. Now I found this really cool tool online which basically generates letters for you. I'll put the website link down in the description but this is how it works. You type out what you want. I usually type it out a few times just so I've got more letters to choose from. And then once you've got this, you can literally just right click, copy each letter and paste it straight into your Photoshop document. Once you've cut all of them out, I recommend rotating some of them a little bit like you've really stuck them on and then maybe just throw a little drop shadow on so that it looks like they're sitting on top of another paper layer. Alright guys, I just wanted to say the main reason I actually made this video is because for the past week or so I've been doing lots of these collage effects on my Instagram. I've also started doing speed arts on Instagram so if you don't follow me then go drop a follow 
If you've actually come to this video from Instagram, because I know a lot of you were commenting asking for the tutorial, I hope I covered enough to explain how I do the Instagram posts. I guess they're a little bit more complex, but if I've missed anything, then leave a comment. If you guys want part two, where me and King are going to go into more detail, all you have to do is go drop him a follow and let me know that that's what you want by dropping a like on this video and leaving a comment. Anyway, that's going to be all for this video. I hope this was useful. Check out the other videos on my channel. I have loads of graphic design tutorials. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more and that is your boy out goodbye